Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the four to eight player game, Fun Facts, designed by Casper Lapp and published by Repo Production, who helps sponsor this video. I'm sure you know some facts about your friends, but this game is gonna help you discover the best ones, the fun facts. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, shuffle all of the cards and then place eight into a face down pile on the table, returning the rest of the box for use in future games. Then each player collects one of these arrow tiles and a matching colored marker, writing their name on one of the sides, ensuring that the arrow end is upright. The opposite face is known as the answer side and is left blank for now. Finally, pick someone randomly to receive this star, making them the first player. And that's the setup. In Fun Facts, you and the other players will be answering trivia questions. But if trivia questions scare you, don't worry because the answers will always be a number. And the subject will always be something you're an expert in. Because they'll be about you. Not only that, this is a cooperative game, meaning that all of the players are working together to get the best score over the course of eight rounds. And each round is broken into three phases, starting with the answer phase. Here, the first player draws and reads the top card from the deck. The game comes with a variety of fun and interesting questions, like if you could time travel and spend a day in another year, which year would you choose? Or how long is your ideal night of sleep? Sometimes the question will require you to answer within a range of zero to 100, as indicated here, where it asks, how much do you struggle with throwing something away because it might be useful later? With zero meaning it's no struggle at all, all the way up to 100 meaning it's an impossible struggle for you. For our example here, we've drawn a question that asks, how many board games do you own? I'm gonna be very curious to see these answers. Now just know, if the group doesn't feel the question applies, or they just don't like it, they can agree to set it aside and draw a new one from the box. Either way, players each now secretly write their number on the answer side of their arrow, and they should make sure not to give any clues about what their answer might be. In situations where it makes sense, also add a unit of measurement. For example, you might include seconds or minutes if the question requires it. And once everyone's done, that ends the answer phase, and now it's time for the place phase. Here, the first player sets their arrow in the middle of the table with their answer face down unseen. Then starting with the player on their left and going clockwise, each other person places their arrow on the table, also answer side down, but in a way that they believe relates to the other player's arrows based on their guesses of what they think the other players have written. So if you set your arrow above another person, then you're saying you believe your answer is higher than theirs. If you set it below, then you're saying you think it's lower. If a player sets their answer between two arrows, they think their number falls somewhere between those other two players. And again, players are not allowed to give hints or clues about what their numbers might be. After everyone has added their arrows to the column, the first player, and only the first player, can move their answer to a different location if they want to. Now it's time to move to the reveal phase of the round. Here you flip over the arrows one by one, starting at the bottom and going upwards. And when you're finished, you'll want to see values that go upward in order from lowest to highest. Any that break that order, you set aside. When there's more than one arrow you could remove to fix the order, the players decide together which ones to set aside. For example, if we set aside this arrow, these three numbers are now in order. But we could have also just removed this arrow, and again, they'd be in order. Here, we only have one choice, so we'll remove this one. Now, the arrows that remain do go in order from lowest to highest. Also, tied values are allowed and don't break the order. So these results in this position would be fine. Either way, when you're done checking, the team gains one point for every arrow that remains in the column, and you write that total here on the star. And that ends the round. Players now take back their arrows and erase the answer side, and the star is then passed to the next player in clockwise order, and a new round begins with a new answer phase. At the end of each future round, you'll add any new points you've gained to the previous ones, recording the new total on the star. Once you've gone through all eight cards for your game, you'll have a final score, which you record on this Record of Legends sheet. 
and then you compare it to this score grid found on the back of the rulebook to see how you ranked for your number of players. This will give you a new score to try to beat the very next time you play, which will probably be right away. And that's everything you need to know to play Fun Facts. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.